This video will show you how to use the t-table. We have the t-table here in front of us. Let's say we want to do a two-tailed test. This could be for a confidence interval or for a hypothesis test. What we'll do here is we'll do a two-tailed test at the level of significance of 0 0.05. And so you can read the two-tailed test row here. We go over to 0 0.05 and we look down. Now in the example with the loon data, we're looking at 59 degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom column is all the way to the left. And so when we look that up, what we actually see is we don't have a row for 59, but we've got one for 60, and that's close enough. When we look over to where the two rows meet, we see the value 2.000. So we can say at 59 degrees of freedom, or really 60 degrees of freedom, at a level of significance of 0 0.05, the critical value for t is 2.000. Now what if we wanted to look at a one-tailed test? A one-tailed test could be used for hypothesis tests. In this example, we still want to conduct the test at the 0 0.05 level, but we want to do a one-tailed test. And so we'll jump over a column, and now we look at the one-tailed row here till we get to 0 0.05. And then we look down and we find a different value for the critical value for t. Here we find the value of 1.671. So at roughly 59 degrees of freedom, at a level of significance of 0 0.05, the value of t is 1.671. That's how we would do it if we were to look at it on the t table, but we could also use r. In r, there's a function called qt. This is the quantile function for the random generation for the t distribution. And so you could hit question mark QT in your R session to learn more. So for a two-tailed test, and again, this is for our confidence intervals or for our hypothesis tests, the QT function can be written, and we're going to give it two values. We're going to say the first value is 0 0.975. Now this is for a two-tailed test. You can imagine that for any two-tailed test, at a level of significance of 0 0.05, you're going to have 2.5% of the area of the curve to the right of it. And you're going to have most of the curve, or about 97.5 of it, to the left. And so that's why we put in a different value here than we might look up on the previous t-table. So for a two-tailed test, we'd enter 0 0.975, and then we have 59 degrees of freedom. And so we can highlight this and run it. And we get the critical value of 2.000, similar to what we found on the t-table. Now we could also use the QT function for a one-tailed test, and this would be for a hypothesis test. So similar to what we did for the two-tailed test, now we're only looking at one side, so we can imagine 5% of the area off to the right. That wouldn't be covered in our hypothesis test, but 95% of the area to the left. And so here we could set QT to 0 0.95 or a level of significance of 1 minus 0 0.05 for the one-tailed test. And so we can highlight these data and run it. And we can see we find exactly what we found on the t-table. For a level of significance at 0 0.05 for a one-sided or one-tailed test, we find the value of 1.67.